All right, so we are back. We have restarted the recording here. To catch you up real quick, we had some technical issues um, with OBS. The Lions, all three of us are on the Lions. We have the chef here with us for the first time this year. It's only week 12, so, you know, happy to have him uh, for this final stretch. Uh, it only took 11 weeks. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> we also have Steel City for the second week in a row. Um, again, we were all on the Lions, and this is also a circle pick for the Chef and I. Uh, Lions plus three. Then we have a little bit of a showdown here. Um, Steel City is mainly on the over 52 in this Cowboys Raiders game. But he also thinks the Cowboys are going to win outright against the Raiders. Uh, the Chef and I are actually on the Raiders plus seven and a half. And that was another one that we took for Circa. This catches you up. This is week 12 of NFL picks. Uh, we are on the Bills and the Saints. Get us going, Mr. Chef. What you got? Oh, the Bills just got embarrassed last week. It is what it is. But last week they did not have their middle linebacker, Tremaine Edmonds, who is a huge part of their defense. Um, I think the Bills beat the absolute breaks off of the Saints. Um, I also love the under in this game. The under in the, the 8 o'clock game on thir on Thanksgiving is like 6-0, and or 6-1, and or 7-0 and in the past seven. Um, give me the under. Everybody's going to be sleepy after all the turkey. You know, that good stuff. Um, Bills 27, Saints 6. Um, the defense comes to play. The Saints are just banged up. They're about to call me to play offensive line. No Camara. Mark Ingram's banged up. Their quarterback is Trevor Simeon. It just doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. The defense is good, but I think the Bills bounce back this week and handle business. Steel City? I mean, I, I agree with you on everything you said pretty much except for the score. I think it's going to be a freaking blowout. I think it's a 45-14 to 14 game with the trash touchdown at the end to, to get it from 45-7. to 7. You're counting on Trevor Simeon. You're counting I on – I said 27-6. to 6. I feel like that's kind of a blowout. No, 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 no. I want an, an ass whooping. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be a Thanksgiving Day something. It's going to be 45 to 14. It's going to be zero running game from the Saints with no Camara, so they're going to have to rely on passing. And that means looking at Trevor Simeon, I think after getting destroyed by the Colts, the Bills are going to have to, they're going to have to, this is a statement game. It's a must win game for the Bills. They've got to win this game and they've got to dominate to get back on track here for the postseason. So I, I think you take the Bills, you take, them at the spread and you take the over i like the over here because the bills are going to put up 40 points see bro that same defense is proud that's a good defense they're not gonna they're not just gonna back down um so again i, I i'm right there with you on the bills beating the brakes off of them but they're not gonna put up 40 i'm sorry it's gonna be the over in a 45 to 14 game for me and you're not gonna sway me either way the bills are gonna come to play josh allen's gonna throw for three Stefan Diggs is definitely gonna catch one. Nope. Bro, I got I got a lot of family in upstate and western New York, and for their sake, I hope I hope you're right. But you know, there are tables to be broken through on Thanksgiving. Um, but it's just it's gonna be a defensive struggle. Bro, they're gonna be eating turkey and drinking Hennessy all freaking day. This is not gonna be a, like let's just air it out. Like they're gonna be just like all right, bro, we've been eating all day. Let's just, let's just play some good defense and get the fuck out of here. Get back to New York. Hey. It's going to be it's gonna be low score. You're entitled to your opinion, sir. I mean, of course I am, because I'm I right. My, Miami Mike over here shaking his head, so I, I want to see what he's what he's thinking here. We got, what is that? Oh, uh, he's on the Saints, too. So he's, he's, he's on the Saints, too. The Saints? He thinks the Saints are going to win this game? Yeah. You think the Saints are going to win? Yeah, the Saints are going to win. Outright win. You're betting Saints money line. Animal. 
I I might, yeah, I think I will, actually. It all makes sense. Animal. Oh, I don't even know why you're a Dolphins fan. Animal. Look, look, this sense. is, it's prime time for a reason. If this was going to be a blowout game, they would put it as the earliest it's, slot. Again, it's prime time. This it's, is, it's, it's, hey, hold on, hold on. You had, you had your time, Chef. You had your time, Chef. Stephen A., all right? This is a game that the Saints are going to come prepared for. The stadium that is no longer the Superdome will be stupid loud and packed to the brim, all right? They are going to come full. They are going to come drunk. They are going to come ready to make some noise against that Bills team. This is not a game that the Bills perform well in. The Bills are not on a good trajectory right now. This is their game. I think this is their wake-up call that makes them go, oh, shit, we really need to get, like, some help. We, we need help. They need some milk in Buffalo right now, all right? The fact that you think... Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, Steel City. I'm going to let you finish, but you already spoke. Shh, all right? The Saints are going to get it done. All black, prime time, in New Orleans, on Turkey Day. You take the underdog. The team that nobody thinks they have a shot, Saints are going to do it. Also, a quick note on Trevor Simeon. I have a little uh, previous knowledge of him. He was a franchise quarterback for me and Matt at a plenty of times. Um, oh, God. And we got it done, all right? The guy can which be trusted. You, he can be trusted. He which can means be you're trusted. doing a fantasy draft and you just forgot to take a quarterback. And you realize, holy shit, it's the 50th round. I should probably get a backup. Realize that's the only guy left. And he won me some Super Bowls. Turned him into a Hall of Famer. That's what we do with Trevor Simeon. He just needed got, a got, shot. He needed an opportunity. He got one. Watch him go somewhere else next year and make things happen. Denver Broncos. I got, I got something for you. I got something for you, man. Houston so Texans. You're so confident Watch. the Saints are going to win this game. Let's do a little side little side wager between me and Miami Mike here. If you think the Saints are going to win, what do you think they're what, – what would you – what's the spread for the Saints there? You want Saints minus, minus three? What are you going to give me? Point, you're going to give me bills and points for this game? The line's bills minus five and a half, six. I know that. I know what the Vegas line is. I'm talking about the line between me and Miami Mike because he's so confident the Saints are going to win this game outright. Then let's make a little wager on it. I think the Bills, I think this isn't even going to be a game. As an observer, I would be interested to see what we come down with here. Who hurt you, Scott? Was it the Saints? <laughs> <laughs> you know who hurt me? Times of Detroit Lions. That's who hurt me. All right, look. Uh... The Scott Saints. Is a shitty mood since they tied with the Lions. I'm not. I'm not interested in Saints minus anything. I think they barely would. look. I told you how I think this game is going to go. I think it's going to be twenty-one to. Um, shoot, let me see. Twenty twenty-one seventeen towards the end of the game. Saints go down, get a touchdown with like a minute and twenty left. Take the lead, like, 23-17. Um, or, no, I'm sorry, like, 23-21. Your are all the way off there, bud. Sir, 23-21. Josh Allen, they get the ball, they're driving. They get a couple penalties, hold them back. The stadium's loud, making noise. They get a couple sacks. The Bills run out of time. They lose 23-21. Now the Bills, after they had this stellar start to the season, are now second place to the Patriots by a full game. Uh, controversy in Buffalo. Shit has hit the fan. That's what I think is going to happen. And that's the, that's the talking points for Friday and Saturday going into Saturday. What? They're playing New England next. That's their next game. That's fine. They're still, they're still giving up the division lead, which they were supposed to have handed to them prior to the season even starting. Only time will tell. Look, I respect your opinion, even though it's completely wrong. Um, All right, we'll remember this. I don't, I don't respect his opinion. We'll remember, hey, this. Hey, we'll remember this. We'll remember this. We'll have to wait and see. We'll remember this. That's all that matters. Tomorrow night, we'll have an answer to this. That's the good news. 
Yep, one way or another. On one way or another. Let's be honest. Like you guys said, you think it's going to be at least a 21-point game. Why is this line only six points? I rest my case. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Falcons Jaguars is the next what we're going to discuss. Steel City, you can go first. Yeah, this is first. Dog, second go third. Dog, dog, shit. Talk about this game. This is the dog shit game of the week. Why we're talking about it, I don't know. You have two horrible teams playing against each other. Who cares? I'm not touching. I'm not betting on either of these teams. Awesome. Thanks stuck. for your opinion. The chef, please, please take over. Down. The chef, please. Yo. Um, yeah. Awful game. Again. <laughs> Don't know why we're talking about it. Ah, two, yes. dumpster, two dumpster fire teams. Um, it's, it's off. This is like the... If there was a version of a super shitty Georgia, Florida, this is it. This is a poor man's Georgia, Florida. What happened in Georgia, Florida? Eh, Georgia sucks, but they beat Florida. Eh, I think... I think the Falcons win. I don't like it. Yeah. Like to, to take one or the other. It's just gross. It's really just gross. Like you're telling me that I just got to pick the Falcons to win. Yep. Mm, like no points. You're telling me I just got to pick the Jaguars to win. No points. Mm. Here's how I look at it. Give me the Falcons, but I don't like it. It's, I love it. Give me, give me the, it's gross too, but it. like give me the over there. Like, no, hate that. Hate that. Kyle Pitts, <laughs> Kyle Pitts, like if someone's going to do something, the the Falcons just got their asses handed to them two weeks ago. Correct. They had a lot of time to stew resides in Fulton County. <laughs> that they are. They've had a lot of time to sit on that. Uh-huh. But at the same time, it's it's the Falcons. Right. This is one this is one that they they just they find a way to screw up. If I were to bet it, I would go Falcons, but it's just it's so gross on so many levels. Dirty birds got it. Dirty birds got that, it. That 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 game will not be making its way onto the chef's television on Sunday. If let's I just was, let's just let's just that's schedule understandable. Setter, if I was a schedule setter for the NFL, I would have seen this game. I would have given both the teams a loss, and I would have given them another buy. That's what I would have done. That I think is probably the best way that this could have gone. In the interest of the American people, that probably should have happened. But here we are. But here we are. And talking now... About, talking about it. Not even having to deal with it on Sunday, but talking about it beforehand. Yes. Yeah. Let's... Yeah, let's maybe not do that. Much they, they got Talk it Talk about the a game that matters. That, that, All right, here's a game that matters. Titans and Patriots. What you got for us? I mean, everything... I, I like the Titans here... They're due. They just got. They lost to the Texans, bro. The only thing I can think of is they were looking ahead. They were like, "All right, we got the Patriots. We just saw how they played on Thursday. Like we, they just twenty-five zero the Falcons. Let's start looking ahead. They didn't have a lot of players. They're banged. The Titans are banged up. Um, but I think they cover." If they get help, if Jeffrey Simmons and Harold Landry end up going, I think they could pull it out because the way that they match up against the Patriots is they're just going to be physical too. Like if you want to just line up, their front four is physical. So if you just want to line up and run the ball, like the Titans, they can they can make that work. Like if if you're not asking Tannehill to throw it 50 times and you just need to keep it like 20, 20 attempts and just run the ball and keep it tight, can't help you do that. Um, the way you beat the Titans is by having wide receivers and kind of, you know, making those corners work. 
and then just being creative with your run game. I think the Titans cover. I don't think they win the game. But, you know, I'm just kind of pissed off at how good the Patriots are right now, to be perfectly honest with you. It's just it's just unfortunate for anyone that enjoys the NFL. Um, yeah, I think the Titans cover. Mike Vrabel against the Patriots coming off a, off a loss that they shouldn't have lost. Um, Vrabel's going to have the boys ready to run through a brick wall. Give me the Titans to cover. All right. Steel City, what about you? What do you think? You know, I, I want to say the Titans would cover, but at the same time, the Patriots, their five-game win streak right now, they're playing well. They beat a couple of good teams. I mean, yeah, they shut out Atlanta. Atlanta's Atlanta, but still, no points in the NFL is impressive. Um, Mac Jones keeps playing the way he's playing. Possible rookie of the year candidate compared to the other rookies that are out there. I mean, it's him and Jamar Chase on the offensive side. Like, me, that's like the I, two of them. Yeah, I mean, but to me, like I said last week, the Titans are so unpredictable. That's why I didn't touch the Titans game last week because we talked about it. We actually said that Houston was going to win. The Titans are just so unpredictable, and they play to their, you know, their level of competition, which that they do. in this case, they would play a, a good game, and I think – Rabel's going to come out ready to go, and he's going to have his team ready to go. So I want to say Titans cover, but there's that thing in the back of my mind where the Patriots right now are just somehow they're just good again. So there's a chance that they come out and dominate. But I'm going to go with the chef on this one with my gut feeling that the Titans are going to play up to their up to their level of competition. And coming off an embarrassing loss, I think, I think the Titans are going to cover here. Yep. They might not win money line. But I think they're going to yep. have the seven points. Agreed. Yep. Yep. I'm with you guys. And uh, that's also one of the circa picks for the chef and I. So we got three on the board right now with the Lions, Raiders, and Titans. Um, we're all in agreement there on the Titans to cover against the Patriots. Next game we're going to talk about is the Buccaneers and the Colts. Steel City, uh, why don't you lead us off with the Colts? I know... Uh, you got a couple personal ties with, with your Valdosta brethren there. Yeah, so this is one game I'm really looking forward to. I think this has potential to be one of the better games for the week. I think that both the teams are coming off solid wins. They're looking strong. You got Tom Brady. You got the Colts. Jonathan Taylor, who right now he's got, what, 1,137 rushing yards. I, I think that this is going to be a game where I'm not going to bet on either team here with the spread or money line. I think I'm going to take the over. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. And I think that if you can find a way to bet Kenny Moore from Valdosta State, the Valdosta State University, Kenny Moore, the best nickel cornerback in the NFL, to get an interception, I think he's going to get another one off Tom Brady here. He had a tipped pick to himself last week in the dominating win over the Bills. I, I just don't see... This game's going to be close. I think this is going to be a great game from the first snap to whatever happens in the last play of the game. I think it's going to be a great game, not a blowout. But that usually means that I'm wrong and it's a blowout. But in this case, I'm sticking with my gut. I'm not betting either one because I'm scared. I don't know who's going to come out and dominate or if it's just going to be a last possession game. I am going to bet the over, though. I love the over. All right. Right on. What do you think, Chef? Um, I... I like the Bucks here, but I really like the under. Um, Buccaneers got the best run defense in the NFL. I think the Colts are riding a little too high right now. They got their TV show. Um, you know, they just – Jonathan Taylor is being talked about an MVP candidate. Yep. I think this is where the Colts are like, oh, so this is what playoff football is. Um, I love I – mean, no disrespect to Kenny Moore, no disrespect to Darius Leonard, you know, guys that are close to people in our group. Um, but, you know, I think it's a it's a low-scoring low game um, because that Colts defense is good, but uh, the Bucks run defense is, is where it's at. Um, Carson Wentz, I have no faith in whatsoever, even against a, a not-so-good 
Um, Buccaneers secondary. Quentin Nelson is banged up, which is huge because that's a matchup that I was really excited to see. Quentin Nelson versus Vita Vea. I, that's just that's just good old fashioned football right there. Um, I I think it's an under. I like the Colts, but I, I'm kind of smashing the under here. Um, actually, you know what? I kind of like the Bucks now that I think about it. I think the Bucks the Bucks win. I'm just going to take the money line. I know it's at three, um, but I like the under for sure. All right. Fair. Um, Go ahead, Steele. I was going to say, if you look at the Bucks defense, or sorry, the Bills defense, the Bills do not have a bad defense, and they have a good run defense, and the Colts just dominated them. With a rushing attack. You look at you so, look at who the Bills have played. Look at who the Bills have played. Hold on. My point is the Colts are going to run on the box. That's my point. And you say Jonathan Taylor's been considered for MVP, kind of with a a tone that means that sounds like he's not supposed to be there. Where in my eyes right now, I think he's a front runner for MVP. So I think the uh, I think the Colts are going to make this a much more interesting game than you think, and I think the Bucks. Oh no, it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight, think, but it's going to be close. I think the Bills are going to, or uh, the Colts are going to expose Tampa Bay's defense a little bit rushing wise, just like they did the Bills. That's what nah, I'm they're do. they're, they're right. coming into this prepared. Like this is where the Bucks come to play. This is what it's for. This is what it's all about. They don't care about the first ten weeks of the season. The Colts are way like they. This is the first time a team has ever had a hard knocks in the middle of the season, and then they just came out and beat a team that a lot of people like to win the AFC by a lot, not just beat, but by a lot. And one of their players had an MVP type performance. They're setting up for a let letdown. Also, Tom Brady. Kind of has a thing against Indianapolis. He plays well there. He's good there. And you know damn well that he wants to give Peyton a call back after having a monster game in Indy. So, yeah, give me the Bucks. Give me the under, though, because I think, I, I just don't think that Taylor's going to be able, Taylor's going to be under 100 rushing yards, in my opinion. Um, Wentz is going to throw a couple picks. Give me the box in the under. I'll agree that I do not have that much faith in Wentz, and I will agree with you that if any coach is going to come in ready to go and schemed up, it's going to be Arian. So I think that you've got some points there, but uh, we'll have to see. I'm sticking with my uh, my picks. Right on. Fair. Uh, I was actually on the Colts. Originally, and me and uh, our tr- the chef and I talked a couple of games earlier today, and he ultimately talked me off the ledge with the Colts and uh, over to the dark side with the with the Brady led Buccaneers. Um, I think I think he's on to something. I think they're just going to be too much. I think ultimately this is a game that yeah the Colts are really high right now. They've won their last I think what four in a row. Um, they're sitting pretty. They did just start that, uh, you know, TV show. So this week, I, you know, I haven't watched this week's episode yet of Hard Knocks, <clears throat> but I'm sure that the whole, you know, time they were just talking about how dominant they were um, and how they performed in that game. Um, let alone the game before that, you know, was against, I believe, the the Jaguars and the Jets. Yeah. So this is a game that. They've played some lesser competition before that game last week. Uh, Now they're feeling really, really good going into this, but the problem is they're playing Tom Brady. Um, If they were playing, you know, Ryan Tannehill and the Titans, I'd probably be on the Colts, and I'd probably stick with my guns with the Colts. But the fact that they are playing who many people call, uh, I mean, let's say it, he's the GOAT. It's annoying to say because he's a former Patriot, but – he is the GOAT. Um, I, I think the Buccaneers, I think like Travis said, this is a playoff type of game. They'll they'll come ready to, to show up. You know, the Colts might get on them early. 
um, maybe like 10 to 3, 10 to nothing kind of deal. And then I think that's when the Buccaneers turn it up and, and ultimately win like maybe 31, 28 is how I yeah, see I it. Think if, I think if, uh, if it comes down to, of course, Brady having the last possession, then they're going to win. Something like that in the last two minutes. Right. But the note I have next to this game is it's hard to bet against Brady. Yep. And that's you know, that's why he's the GOAT. But I don't know, I just the Colts are flying high and I think they're gonna keep keep flying high, so I'm gonna stick with my bet. But I do have that note on here that just is staring me back in the face that says it's hard to bet against Brady. It is but hard. It's cool with it. He, he, tends to, he tends to win. And especially yep. this time of year. Like it's it is what it is. It's yep. gross, but it is what it is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Next game we got is Vikings 49ers. 49ers are favored by three at the moment. What do you guys think here? Um, first off, just want to take a moment to just, you know, we all know what's going on in Minnesota with Everson Griffin. Um, hope the guy's healthy, first and foremost. Um, you know, terrible situation. We want to make sure that he's doing well. Um, glad that everything went the way it did without any violence or anything like that um with that being said i like the 49ers here um i just think their offense is a little bit too much with george Kittle coming back um no daniel hunter no everson griffin um michael pierce is still on the ir dalvin tomlinson just went on the covid reserve list i just think the 49ers offense is going to be a little bit too much um, Kirk Cousins is due for one of those Kirk Cousins kind of games. He's been doing a little too well. Um, he's he's due for one of those like, oh, that's the guy we know and love. Um, you know, a couple couple touchdowns, but a couple picks, maybe 180 yards or something like that. Um, the front seven of the 49ers is solid. They're going to be able, you know, you're not going to shut down Dalvin Cook, but you're they're going to do a, a good enough job. Um, give me the 49ers minus three. Um, I think they, they hold their own. They haven't been very good at Levi Stadium, but I think they, I think they get it done um, this week against Minnesota. Steel City, what do you got? You know, I think this is another showdown for us. Uh, the 49ers are 1-4 in four at home on the year. They're not playing well at home. You've got the Vikings just coming that. in. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, I mean, I'm just agreeing with you. You've got the Vikings coming in off of three solid games, right? The last two wins, Green Bay and the Chargers, both solid teams, and an overtime loss to Baltimore, another good team. So I think – Kirk Cousins is due for a Kirk Cousins kind of game, yes. But right now, I think with Justin Jefferson playing the way he's playing, Dalvin Cook back performing well, I think Kirk Cousins is going to do just enough here to win this game outright. So I think the plus two points is just kind of a little gimme. I like the Vikings to take this money line and the plus three points, and I think that this one too, I'm going to ride the over on this one as well. All right, so we got a little bit of a showdown here. I am on the Vi or the uh, no, I'm not on the Vikings. I am on the 49ers. Um, I think they get it done. The main difference here is their rush defense. I think they're able to hold Dalvin Cook to under, you know, maybe even like 80 yards, um, causing Kirk Cousins to throw. I think Kirk Cousins is going to have another good game. But I do see him, you know, turning the ball over once, if not twice, if not three times. He may throw one pick and have kind of two strip sacks is kind of how I see this one going. That Vikings defense is also different without Everson Griffin. You know, who's to say if he's even going to play this week? I'd be shocked if he does. Um, so that's a huge thing for me in this one. And that is why I'm on the 49ers with the chef. And that's also one of our circuit picks there. I um, think they handled the Vikings pretty well. I think the 49ers finally got it back on track. They played the Jaguars last week, I think, at the perfect time. So now they're able to uh, really start to get things going and grooving. Nice. Um, next, yeah. we'll, we'll talk Rams, pa Packers. We got to go a little, little quick here, uh, try to get these in. Um, 
Rams and Packers. I'll go ahead and start it with uh, the chef here. The chef, what do you got on us this one? I love the Rams. I think they match up great against the Packers. Jalen Ramsey against Devontae Adams. If anyone's going to do anything against him, he is. Elton Jenkins is out for the year for the Packers. Uh, Aaron Donald's coming into town. I love the Rams. I'm hammering it. I, I think they beat the brakes off of the Packers. All right. Still City. I am. Uh, I agree. I think that. Packers at home, they're 4 0. I think they're going to get their first loss. I think that Aaron Rodgers showing his broken toe to everyone on national television shows us he's going to have a little limp and he's going to have, you know, the Rams defense flying in all over the place, making him run around and use that foot. I think Stafford will be doing the Lambeau leap at the end of this game, and I think it's going to be a blowout. I think I take the Rams points. Interesting. I am not there yet, uh, personally. I am torn on this game. I could totally see. I've, I've bet against, if for the same note that you have against Brady, I have one about Aaron Rodgers. Um, anytime I sort of figure Aaron Rodgers is out and, you know, this is going to be the week where he's going to just suck, he ends up proving everybody wrong, has a career like flu MJ type day, and makes it happen. Um, whether that's his O line being, you know, completely injured and not giving him any time or, you know, the toe like he's got right now. I just think that the Packers offense is going to use him in a way, and Devontae Adams, they're just going to do a ton of quick slants, get the ball out of his hand as quick as possible, so he doesn't have to take quick, you know, too many drop backs. He's not going to get the chance to, you know, get hit by Aaron Donald, things like that, really let plays to develop. I think they'll eat all day long with those little slants. They're going to aggravate the Rams' defense. Um for that reason, I'm not. I don't think I'm going to get to the window on either one, but I'd probably lean Packers, honestly, if I if I had to to pick a side here. I think the Packers. Rams is going to get right up on Adams. He's going to press. He's not going to let those slants happen. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Know, they're, but, going to, they're going to get right up on him. But I think that also forces almost them to double team Adams off the line because yeah, you can get up on Adams and press him, but you can only do that so many times before he could potentially beat you downhill. And Aaron Rodgers is the type of quarterback where he doesn't need a drop step to launch that thing up and just let him go get it. Bro, if anyone's going to do it, though, it's Jalen Ramsey. Like, that's the dude that you want. If you if we'll you got to put a dude one-on-one, -on -one, we'll that's see. the dude. He's been exposed plenty of times before, so yeah. we'll see. I was going to say, we'll see. If anyone's going to expose him, I was going to say, if anyone's going to expose him, it's going to be Devontae Adams. And Devontae yeah. Adams has. So we'll see. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. see. Last game that we're going to discuss here is the best one of the week. Uh, it's where the Miami Dolphins are going to absolutely drop a duty stain on the entire state of North Carolina and one particular person all the way out in Seattle, Washington. Mr. The Chef uh, Baker is going to take an L. And uh, so I can tell you right now what side I'm on. We are on the Dolphins. The juice is loose. Potentially, could be coming back to Miami. Absolutely not. Uh, we'll we'll see if it if it happens. I I wish it will. But uh, Dolphins plus three and a half. They get it done. They ruin Cam's little comeback story. I really don't believe this to happen. I'm not picking this game legitimately. Uh, I do think the Panthers will probably beat the Dolphins. I'm looking more at the under here. But uh, go Dolphins. Uh, the Dolphins suck. Uh, the Panthers are about to absolutely destroy the Dolphins. Brian Burns are, and uh, Hassan Reddick are going to eat to his lunch, then they're going to fucking spit in his face with it. Wow. Whoever starts this game, wow. the quarterback ain't finishing the game. Tua, Tua, wow. If Tua starts, he's not finishing the game. If Brissett starts, he's not finishing look the you, game. Look at Greg Williams over anybody. here. Your offensive line can't block anybody. Um... Our defensive line is just going to wreck havoc. Okay. Granted, our offensive our offensive line needs some work, so it's going to be a lot of checkdowns to McCaffrey. McCaffrey's bet the overall McCaffrey catches and receiving yards. He's going to get a ton of checkdowns. Um, Panthers are going to win this game. It's going to be low scoring, like you said, though. Uh, Panthers are going to win nineteen to six. 
nasty. Nice. But yeah, I, I think that's where I'm leaning is under. What do you got, Steele? Uh, I'm going to be with Carolina on this one. Um, I think it's going to be low scoring. I think uh, when I said I'm going to be with Carolina, I meant I'm going to be with low scoring Carolina because I think Miami is going to win this game. When I'm That's the rule. No. Hold no. on. Hold on. On a freak play, a special teams blocked punt, something stupid. That's how they're going to win. This I don't know what's going to happen. We're gonna work. But it's it's going to be something weird. Um, that's where I'm at, and oh, we'll, we'll see what happens. I love it. I love it. Absolutely. All right. Hold on. I got I got something for the people here. This is a uh, a special. I got a turkey day touchdown parlay. Oh, okay. The, Hit us with it. Zeke Elliott, Stephon Diggs, Swift, anytime touchdown scores. I got it at around plus six hundred. Okay. So parlay the three touchdown scores. That's what I like for the Turkey Day touchdown parlay. I like I like Swift. Um, I like. I think Sw- Tony Pollard's gonna get himself one. I'm not so sure about Zeke. Uh, yeah, I think, I think for that's what I'm most concerned about is Zeke. I think Diggs and Swift get it easy. I think Zeke's the one we're gonna have to watch for. Another one that I like is Cole Beasley. Uh, he finally practiced in full, and Marshawn Lattimore is going to get himself a lot of stuff on digs. It's going to open up a lot of stuff underneath for Beasley. I think he ends up sneaking in. Um, another one I really like, again, I mentioned Darren Waller earlier. Yep. I think he has a monster game. Yep, I agree on Darren Waller for sure. I also like Mark Ingram in that Saints-Bills game. He may not go, though. I think he's going to go. So keep an eye on your injury reports tomorrow. I think I think he's ultimately going to go. I think uh, he's going to put he's he's the Saints' leading rusher all time. That's that's his job. He's going to do what it do. He's going to get it done for the city of New Orleans, and he'll be eating that turkey leg at the end of the game on live TV. You heard that's it here first. Hard, you heard it here first. Um, yeah, I like I like Swift. I like Waller a lot in that slot, and then I like Mark Ingram on that one for sure. Um, if we had to do a quick little three game parlay for the people, what do you guys think? What's your best game? Uh, we'll start with the chef here. Your best game on the slate. Uh, if you had to take one, who do you got? Best game on the slate. Uh, give me the Rams. I, wow. I love the Rams against the Packers. Wow. They matched up so perfectly against them. Uh, Elton Jenkins is a huge loss. That's I love the Rams there. This is a Rams prove it game. Matthew Stafford going up against a team that he's never really had a good chance to beat. He wants to prove he want he's had a lot of rough games and This is true. This is true. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Oh, I think we may have lost you. Let's see. Let's see if we can get you back here. Let's see. Bear with us one second, folks. Bear with us. Minor technical difficulties here. see if we can get him back in um so we were out with the chef i think he was leaning towards the rams there um let's see if we can't get him back here there we go chef's back on 
So, Chef, I got you for the Rams. Is that correct? Your, your Rams would be correct. your best bet. That's uh, I don't know, man. I just I, I just I don't know. That one's that I mean, one's sketchy. If, I mean, that one's to me. That one's like it's too good to be true in my mind. Everything in that line says that the Rams should be favored by at least like three and a half. That's how I feel. And because I mean, the it Rams doesn't, are coming, the, the Rams are coming off a big, 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 big loss, and we don't know what that offense is going to look like with Odell. Robert Woods is a really good blocker. Do you think Odell's going to want to go in there and block? That's I think true. that's why the line's where it is. That's true. I mean, I, but I, I don't think that now the that line. I think is, about it, the more I think about it, I'm leaning under in this one. I don't think the line is where it is because they're taking Odell Beckham's blocking capabilities into consideration. I mean, fair, but I think Green Bay at home is typically the way to go, especially when people from L.A. are coming there. Correct. There's a reason for at home. So you agree that Green Bay is at home is typically the way to go. Is that what you just said? Typically, but I mean – Typically, is not always right. I mean, it's there's, like on, the there's only two. There's only two teams that can come from LA. So it's like the Tom Brady question. If you wrote on a piece of paper, are you only? Would you bet on Aaron Rodgers at home in Lambeau or Matt you're Stafford? You're probably gonna say yes. No, it doesn't matter who the other person is. You're probably gonna say yes. Well, I'm saying, Stafford, or I'm Stafford. saying, or Matt Stafford. And you, like you said before, they have a track record with each other in the past. Granted, yeah, the Lions, the Lions were a much better or a much worse team than this t- Rams team. That's, it would be one thing sure. if I thought that Aaron Rodgers was like, fuck you, Matt Stafford. I don't fuck with you, bro. We've been in the division a long time. You're an asshole. Go fuck yourself. I think Aaron Rodgers is the type of guy that's like, bro, go get you that. Go get you your bag in L.A. Enjoy yourself because I'm trying to do the same thing next year. So, like, I, I'm not trying to get out here and beat your ass or anything. Like, let's just go have fun, play some football, and enjoy ourselves. No. Um, I think he's trying so, to beat his ass because he knows – he yeah. respects the, Give me the fuck right. out of Matt Stafford. He respects the fuck out of Matt Stafford. I think for that reason, he's going to give them a very good game. Um, Especially, like, him and, Maf- him and LaFleur are going to come up with a game plan – to work around that broken toe and to work around the loss of that guard being off that line. I mean, that is a given. They've done it all year long. They've figured out a way to manipulate that offense enough to get it done week in and week out, ever since that first blowout loss to the Saints. That's what makes me nervous about that game. But I hear you. But I hear you. Scott, what is your best bet? Mine's going to be the Bills. I think the Bills are is a is a no doubter victory. God bless. Um, I almost put the Lions in, but for me, it's the Bills. The Bills is my my pick. Put them in there. We're gonna be uh, sitting at the table, eating some eating some turkey, enjoying Thanksgiving, looking at the TV, going, "Oh, I guess I'll just keep talking to people because this is a blowout." And I think the Bills are gonna take it. I wholeheartedly agree with you there, brother. I think y'all are crazy. Uh, I think you're both nuts uh, on both of those games. My best bet is going to be the San Francisco 49ers. That is my best bet. I think their money line on them uh, is the bet of the weekend. Um, I just don't see how this Vikings team can ultimately get it done. I don't know. Something just came through me that said that was that's a stupid decision. So maybe maybe I'm rethinking that all of a sudden. Um, no, what what went through my head was honestly the Vikings offense as a whole, right? You got Thielen, you got Jefferson, you got KJ Osborne, then you do have Dalvin Cook. If the 49ers are able to slow down Dalvin Cook, that is going to force Dor- Kirk Cousins to throw. Who is back there for the 49ers in that secondary that's going to be able to slow down to Adam Thielen all game? Who's back there is going to be able to slow down a Justin Jefferson? So, you know, that's something to consider there as well. Maybe even the over would be the play there in that Vikings 49ers game, now that, now that we're thinking it. Lovely. Um, 
Not sure yeah, that that would actually be my best bet now that I'm now that we're discussing it a little bit further. And uh, while you're uh, while you're, I'd probably say Lions. Bet. I'm I'm gonna switch it up and go Lions. Lions would be my okay. best bet. I like it. I do like that. First no, one of the I year. Do, I think the Lions is it's just good for America. It's just good for all of us and just good everyone for, that for everyone that has a dream. It, the Lions, it's just... It's, it's basically... Just well, it's basically it's a known Lions. thing, right, at this point. Our entire lives, it feels like, the Lions have sucked. And, but on Thanksgiving, they win. But for and, whatever and reason, and on it, Thanksgiving... They play it, every it, single it, year. There, they play there every God. single year. And they always play a really good game on Thanksgiving. They suck every other game of the year, but Thanksgiving every year, all of a sudden, Boy, it's literally. Like, so I'm I'm watching Red Zone last Sunday again. I live in Seattle. Across the ticker on the bottom, buy your tickets in Detroit for the Thanksgiving game. You can get tickets. Family fat packs of four. This is not just the Seattle area where they're showing this across the ticker. This is glo- worldwide. Anyone that has red zone is getting the same thing. Get your tickets to go see Detroit on Thanksgiving because it's your it's a goddamn American tradition. <laughs> Let's go, Lions. The fighting Dan Campbells. Get it done. Also. Tomorrow is your day. This, the turkey leg is for you. That's right. Get less than her, less than twelve done. hours from kickoff, by the way. Get her done. Less than that's, twelve that's, hours from kickoff. They're gonna, yeah. I mean, they're gonna by the way, Matt Nagy will not have a job come Friday. Let's just be clear about that. Um, if anyone was interested in another game that's happening this weekend, uh, Steelers Cincinnati. No, nobody's interested. Nope. I, Probably I not. I don't. I do no. not know why. No, nope. I think we can end it right there. I don't know why it's plus four and a half, but uh, the division game is always a low-scoring, close game, no matter what team should dominate the other one. So I well, think we can go with the points here. I think that's largely contingent on T.J. Watt and Mika Fitzpatrick coming back. If they come back, yeah, four and a half is a bit much. If they don't, eh, give me the Bengals. I don't but know. I think they are come the, back. Are the Bengals, do the Bengals have a better overall team than the Chargers? <laughs> I think they match up differently. Yeah, but my my just top level broad, no TJ Watt, no Minka Fitzpatrick, no starting offensive guard for us against no powerful against a powerful offense in Los Angeles, where Mike Tomlin and also a lot of that was a home game for the Steelers. Let's let's be perfectly clear about that. That I'm was well not aware, a home game. I'm well aware that. of how the Steel Curtain travels, but also do you, do you think they're going to do that in Cincinnati? No. Also, be, hold on. Also, be aware that the Steelers suck in the West Coast. Really, we play really bad on the West Coast. We've won what one game against the Chargers? I think we've four zero oh, and four against the Raiders. We don't play well over there. We're going to play better. It's a division game. It's going to be close. I think it's going to be a field goal game. So my point is, it's going to be close, a field goal game, and I think you just take the points because it's going to be a close game. I, I do I do because I think you will be healthy, but if you're not healthy, the Bengals are going to win by a touchdown. But I think Watt's back, and I think Fitzpatrick's back. So, again, I agree with you, but if they're not back, that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, fair. Two best players on our team. Interesting. Uh, the chef, we still need to decide on our final circa pick and if we still want to keep our earlier four. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Don't we? We need to make that happen, man. Hey, you want to explain what the circa is for me and the people? Uh, we can, yeah. So the circa is... It's a contest that's run out of the Circa Casino in Vegas. They do a year, Las Vegas. yearly football contest um, similar to the one at Westgate, which is called the Super Contest. So you pay a thousand bucks for an entry, 
Um, you get entered into a contest where you make weekly picks. You pick five games a week against the spread. Over the course of the year, they do quarterly contests as well, so you have a chance to win prizes and money during quarterly prizes. But ultimately, the main prize at the end is uh, worth a couple million dollars. Um, total pot this year is over $4 million total. So that's divided up among the uh, the overall winning pot at the end and then the quarterly prizes throughout the year. So that's what we're involved with. Uh, we were clicking along pretty good there for the last couple of weeks. Um, last week or two, we, we kind of struggled. Last week, we as you, if you guys watched the show, uh, we went one and four with our Circa picks last week. So we fell back a little bit. I think we're about 10 points back, right, the chef? Um, from that, that from that number one slot. So we're looking for a big week this week. We need an undefeated week. Bring us snapping back um, to those top pages so that hopefully we can make a push with this uh, last quarterly run. So that's what we're looking at, Steele. So nice. right now the teams, again, that we have selected for that circa are Lions plus three, still love it. Uh, Raiders plus seven and a half, still love that one. Titans plus six and a half. That one's a little sketchy, uh, but I, I do still like that one to cover. I think the Titans, after being beat the way that they did, I think they have no choice but to snap back and, and play a good game, especially being at the Patriots. Vrabel knows you know, he's got to bring it any time he plays Belichick, so especially at New England. Um, he's, he knows a lot of people there. He does, he's not going to want to look like a hoe. Uh, I think he's going to have his guys ready to go. Um, still like the Titans to cover that one. And then we also have the 49ers minus three right now. But again, as we sort of talk the best bets of the weekend, I, I sort of seem to sketch myself out on the 49ers. So that one, that one I'm a little torn on again. Um, I know where the chef stands, where he would go. He would, he wants the Rams on that board pretty badly. Um, I'm just having trouble getting behind it. But we may have to go with that one, and uh, I may have to have him compromise on something on my side, maybe, or we or we run with the Buccaneers well, or if, the Falcons. If you know anything about me, I'm all about compromise. So that's that's a, that's a lie. All right, so <laughs> I think I'm thinking our options here. We're looking at either the Falcons, the Buccaneers. Mm. Okay. The 49ers or maybe the Rams. So I, I think we got four four teams here that we're looking at. You got three. We yeah we we just dropped back from. Having well no because I'm still I'm still I'm still to, I'm torn on the 49ers now. We got three total, but there's four games for our last two. We need two out of the last four. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying you've got three because the Falcons game should not be an option. Thank you, Scott. That's, Thank you. That's one hundred percent a win for the Falcons. Thank though. you. That's what it should be, though. But it's the Falcons. Every Thank time you. I bet on the Falcons, I look back. Thank you. The next day, and I say, "Why?" I tell myself Thank every you. single time, no matter what, do Thank not you. bet on the Falcons. Thank you. I mean, yes. that's that. Uh, look, that's you are one hundred percent and unequivocally correct. You're not Thank incorrect you. at all. You're not incorrect at all. You However, one hundred percent right. However, this is a game that they should win. They've had 10 days. That's, that's the point of the thing. So I'm it's getting that. They, they should, should win. win. They should dominate. But it's the Falcons. <laughs> but it's, hey, you know what? It's your guys' choice, so do whatever. So, yeah. All right, valid, valid point. Valid point. All right, well, even then, we're looking at Buccaneers, Niners, and Rams. I mean, you know where I stand on the Rams. I like the Bucks. I think it's a low-scoring game. So I could see it being a three-point push, but I still like the Bucks to handle business. I think I like the Buccaneers better than the 49ers. That's fair. So now I'm not mad at it. So we got Lions, Lions, Raiders, Titans, Bucks, and then we're looking at either 49ers or Rams. Hmm. I mean, if you want my opinion, I would yeah. rather run Rams. I know, I know where Rams you would rather go. Point. What are you saying, Steele? I'm saying, who would you rather bet on in this situation? Top line, a strong 
Minnesota team right now that has everyone on their team that's playing really well. Mm. Against the not, e- not everybody. Oh, yeah, but they've got their, their stars, right? Justin Jefferson. Not all of them. Adam Thielen. There's, there's one who's got a little bit of some issues. He needs some tissues on the defensive line for them. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I'm saying there's and that, offense. But that defense, that defense is a completely different defense when Everson Griffin is not on that field. I agree. I'm saying they're, also, they're also down Daniel Hunter, Michael Pierce, and Dalvin Tomlinson went on the COVID list today. Okay, so again. That's a huge mismatch. Offensively, they've got all the talent they need to score points Mm -hmm. against a 49ers team that can give up points. Or do you take the bet on a Rams team that, in my opinion, is more well-rounded than either Minnesota or the 49ers? Yes, they're playing the Packers in Lambeau. This is a scary part, but I just think the Rams are going to play a great game. And I think Stafford's going to be Lambo leaping in the end zone. So to me, that's where I'm going. If I'm you guys, I'm going the Rams. Lambo leaping in the end zone. Rams, and I do the 49ers. I don't know that he's that kind of. I don't know that he would do that to Aaron Rodgers and actually do a Lambo leap. Oh, I know he won't. But I like in terms of like pulling a, you know, maybe throwing a double double birds out. I could, I could maybe see it. He won't, he won't do that it. either. Bro, he's had a, he's, he's played a lot of games in Lambeau. I watched him he's play there. Probably, and how many of those games did he go in there and just like, either we're going to get our asses beat or this season doesn't matter to me or Matt Flynn is starting for the Packers or like, it, it's just like, Stafford, this is kind of a fuck you kind of game for him. Like, hey, I finally am free. Let's let's make the people around him should want to play better. Like, this is where Cooper Cup and Odell elevate their game. Daryl Henderson elevates his game because they're like, all right, let's get a dub for this guy. But it's, he's had a lot of really tough times out here. Yep, I think the Rams win. No doubter. Look at him. Mr. Miami struggling to accept this. I mean, we can just take the Panthers, bro, if you're cool with that. <laughs> or just take the Steelers, you know, if you're cool with oh, that. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> no. If, I had, if, I, if I was able to wait until Saturday morning when we usually make these picks and I knew where the injury report lied on the Steelers, you could get me in there at four and a half if what in I'm just trying to prove the simple point of I am not trying to I'm not trying to guess. Like if if we're betting these that far ahead, I'm not gonna try and put my money on a game where I'm guessing because we kinda got burnt last yeah. week when we you're, did that with the Ravens against the Bears when we thought my, Lamar Jackson was gonna be there, but he wasn't and they won but didn't cover. You're proving my point for me. All I'm trying to say is the only game that you have somewhat confidence in on betting on the team is the Rams. Every other game, you can sit there and make an excuse for it going either way. I think the Rams are your best bet. I think, I, the- I think that's a strong false statement. I like the 49ers. I'm going to stick with the 49ers. What do we think? I like the 49ers, too. 49ers. Let's do it. But 49ers. I'm giving the 49ers have three points that they're giving up. Yep. And I think Minnesota's going to win. I think right. that's but fine. That's the Vikings played the 49ers last year. 49ers beat them 27-10. Like that. Different teams. Yeah. But you're right. The 49ers uh, have more injuries, and the Vikings have basically the same team and added people, but they've also lost their entire defensive line. They have the 27th-ranked rushing defense already. That's going to be a problem. Elijah Mitchell will tear them apart. They're He's coming back. Samuel, bro. They, running Debo Samuel as a running back is a game changer. Their 49ers defense has also not had one game this year where they haven't sacked the quarterback. They will cause problems for Cousins. They'll cause problems for Dalvin Cook. 
I like the 49ers. I think they I think Elijah, Elijah Mitchell coming back this week is going to give Debo Samuel the ability to go out and make more plays than he would being stuck in the backfield. Now, I think that he was explosive and great, to your point there, Chef, but if he's just lined up as a wide receiver doing what he does, he's a stud. So I think. Oh, yeah, and you put him in the slot, too? Like, absolute game changer. Yeah, like, so. You put that dude in the slot against. I mean, they could they could move their number one guy. Who's their number? Who's the Vikings' number one corner right now? Is it Patrick Peterson, who's coming off the IR? Like, I don't know that I want him in the slot against Debo Samuel. Yeah. If I'm the Vikings, they've had they've um, had secondary if issues for a long Harrison time. Smith down, like Harrison Smith is probably not the guy you want in man to man against that guy. No. So I like dropping him in the slot and zone is okay, but not. Not straight up. So, yeah, I mean, I'm good with the 49ers. Yep. Let's, let's let it run. All right, so Lions, Raiders, Titans, Bucks, 49ers. Let it go. It has been submitted, sir. It has been submitted. Drink to that. <laughs> Whoa, bless you, sir. Thank you. All right, well, I can't wait for the Steelers to win. I don't know. Again, if y'all aren't healthy, Bengals are no joke. I feel good even if we're missing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd love to have the front runner for defensive player of the year on our team, but uh, Cam Hayward will pick it up just like he did last week. Just punching people in the chest and shit? Yep. It's called football, man. It's a physical You can't tell me that's not a penalty with the rules the way they are today. Yeah, well, the rules that we are... The, the you know that was today. a penalty with the rules they are today. Yeah, he got who away cares? So what, do, I think today? Right? do I think it's right? No, I think that shouldn't be a penalty. But you know what the way, the rules the way are, they are today. That should have been a penalty. I mean, the rules the way, the way they are today, they also should have called targeting when Sutton intercepted the ball and the offensive tackle about killed him. But you know what? It goes both ways. Well, fair. But that's an offensive attack, so he doesn't really know what he's doing. Hey, the, the way that's the rules, job. The way the rules job. are today is all I'm saying here. That's not his job. So he doesn't really know what he's doing there. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like Rob, that's like Robert Hunt fucking just, hey, I'm just going to catch this shit and run. Like, yeah, it's just, it's, it's not your job, but, like, appreciate you trying and getting after it. I mean, like, it looks good. good. Oh, the bread. I mean, he won angry runs. Like, that's, that's a game changer. And honestly, I'm glad he won angry runs because if we're being real about it, that should have counted. That's a touchdown. It was a touchdown. That's a touchdown in my heart, and it will long live there. And it will long live there. Down. Because that was, that, that was a gangster play. And it wasn't like, like, oh, he just kind of fell upon it. He not only just caught it, he hit the he hit the stiff leg, just <clears throat> and then dove, went full extension, got the ball across the line. I don't know what they need to do in the NFL if they need to make like the tackles eligible too, but like I think that'd make the game a lot more fun. I mean, you can have tackles, tackles are eligible. New rule: tackles are eligible. They can't go more. Anyone can be eligible. It's just about where the end man on the line of scrimmage is. Andrew Thomas for New York caught a touchdown. True. Very, very true. All right, gentlemen, anything you want to add really quick before we sign off for the week? Nope. I got nothing else. The chef, you got anything for us, sir? You're on mute, sir. (laughs) <laughs> the fact that we can see your mouth I am is the best part about that oh, there we go <laughs> sorry what did you say hey, anything you'd like to add before we sign off for the week no I'm um, just uh, thank you for getting me on finally uh, it's been it's been fun looking forward to it uh, in the future absolutely appreciate you finally uh, embracing us with your presence very, you know, it's, uh, very much it had appreciated. To sooner or later. 
That's right. That's right. And many more to come. Many more to come. So yeah, we'll many uh, more to come. next show will be airing this upcoming week. Good luck tomorrow. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Happy Thanksgiving Happy to y'all. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy the turkey legs. Before hey, hold on. Before we jump off, there's been a lot of discussion about mac and cheese pumpkin pie is there any controversial thanksgiving things that y'all got to get off your chest whilst we're still here not a single one line up that food on the table baby i'm eating it all mac and cheese is is an essential side item if there's no mac and cheese throw the whole thanksgiving dinner away that's not a place of that's not a place of peace and thankful anything you're just you're hateful you're hateful and you're sour that's if what you I can said. only choose one side item, what is your go-to side item, gentlemen? Uh, all of them. I said one. Uh, I'm going cheesy funeral potatoes. Funeral potatoes are where it's at. And if you've never had them, you're missing out. I don't know what funeral potatoes are, and but you they are sound... missing sounds, out. It sounds like some real mafia shit right there. That you have yeah, that there's like specific mama, potatoes yeah. made for mama, funerals. Mama, that's that's mama, a lot of funerals. The funeral potatoes, eh? Gabagoo, the potatoes, gabagoo. Gabagoo, the funeral potatoes, eh? You guys are missing out. I'm gonna make them for you. All it's right, bet. It's the best thing you'll have. Bet. It's gonna change your life. To to go with Scott, I am I am a diehard mashed potato guy. You can just leave me with a just a five pound bucket of mashed potatoes and i'm a happy camper so that's my go-to i'm not really and i'm just i'm not a sweets guy so you're you can miss me with the pie i will rather have another just regular plate um so y'all can miss me with the pie i guess that's my one controversial thing if i have one nothing shout out idaho and the potatoes love idaho give me y'all's potatoes not a fan of your politics, but, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Do better, Idaho. We love your potatoes, though. Never love change your potatoes. potatoes. Don't change, change what Change you your politics. Change your minds, but don't change your potatoes, Idaho. There you go. <laughs> Agriculture, keep on doing what you're doing. All right, y'all. Well, I appreciate you being on with me this week. It was a pleasure. Definitely doing it again next week. Uh... Whether we get on, I mean, we could get on definitely before Sunday. That's for sure. We can, we can. I like the getting it on a little bit ahead of time. I don't know about Wednesday. I like to see a little bit more of the practice reports. Maybe Friday, uh, something we could aim for if that's something you guys are down for. But we'll discuss it over the weekend. Um, again, everybody enjoy the, the little mini holiday. Don't go too crazy on Black Friday, and always um, be responsible. Don't do anything I wouldn't do, folks. That's right. Safety first on this holiday, folks. All right, people. Uh, Steel City, I appreciate you. The chef, thank you again. We are out another week. Week 12. Good luck.